Well, hello, welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament. We're reading Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, up to verse 15. This particular chapter is um, concerned with apocalyptic material, and there are similar pericope in Mark's Gospel and in Luke. Hotan un idaiti top delugma tes eremosios torethen dia Daniel to profetu, hestos in topo hagio ho anaginoskon no eto. So we get hotan, which is hot te plus an plus the subjunctive. So whenever therefore you might see top delugma tes eremosios. Now in classical Greek, bdelugma is something which is disgusting or hideous, horrible, and this is an abstract noun, eremosis, which is connected with eremos, a desert. This is the abstract noun, a desolation. And you'll need to look at the commentaries for this section because it's uh, this it has many different interpretations here. It's often translated as the abomination of desolation. Some people referred it to the statue of Zeus that was set up in the Jewish temple during the Maccabean period, but there are other interpretations of this. You'll need to look at the commentaries on this. So literally then, uh, whenever therefore you see the abomination of desolation, to Rathen, this is a neuter participle agreeing with Bdelugma, it's, we've seen it before, I think it's formed from the aorist passive from Lego, uh, erethane or erethane, uh, and this, they've taken the root of this and they're making it into a neuter participle agreeing with Bdelogma. So that which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, Hestos is another neuter participle from Histami. Usual endings are kos, queer, kos, the kappa disappears before the dental tor. We just get the os ending. So this is a neuter participle agreeing with bdelugma, standing. So standing in a holy place. We get this parenthetical ho anaginoskon no eto. Let the one reading understand. We get an uh, third person imperative here from no eto. An anaginosko participle. To read so let the one reading understand tote hoi en te udaioi fugitosan es to ore you get lots of imperatives here third person singular and plural imperatives in this next section which is a good revision of our imperatives just beware from the classical greek point of view the third person imperatives uh, in later greek are different from those in classical greek and so the endings, one of the few examples where the endings are actually quite different from what they are in classical Greek. So at that time, uh, let those in Judea, let them flee into the mountains. Ore, uh, neuter plural from oros, that neuter third declension noun. And let the one epitudometos, literally on top of the house. Uh, so on the roof, perhaps. So let the one on top of the house, uh, me katabato, again, this is a third person singular imperative from katabino, let him not uh, descend. The arai is the aorist imperative from iro. Uh, instead of having the psi ending, the sigmas disappeared, you get arai. Uh, meaning here something like to collect or to pick up. Literally, iro is to raise also mean to take so perhaps to pick up might be good so let the one on top of the house not descend to pick up um, the things from the house so to take the things from his house uh, and let the one in the field may epistrepsato again imperative from epistrepho let him not um, turn or piso back and there's the arrow again to take his garment his hemation which is an inner garment. Now we get this woe, um, uai, plus the dative, which we see elsewhere in Biblical Greek. Um, uh, so uai de tais en gastri ekusais, kai tais the lad zeusais en ekenais tais hemerais. 
Uh, so while li literally to those having understood something in their belly, uh, i.e. womb, so woe to those who are pregnant and those giving suck, we get a feminine participle here, uh, those giving suck in those days. Um, pros ukes there, again this is a, another imperative, and this one is some um, uh, second person, so pray that your flight might not take place and we get a genitive of time here during winter nor and then a dative nor on the Sabbath. Now this is an interesting observation here because um, the Jewish Christians still obeyed the Sabbath but uh, in later times many non-Jewish Christians did not so this is obviously aimed at a congregation which still observed the Sabbath Estiga toti thlipsis megale hoya u gegonin apakes cosmu heos tu non u di ume genetai for at that time there will be esti future for Amy a great tribulation Hoya, such as has not taken place, ap arches cosmu from the beginning of the world, heos to nun, up until the now, so up until now, nor may it happen, ume genetai, ume plus the subjunctive for strong negation, kai eme e kolabothes and hehemerai e kenai. Uk uh, an esothe pasa sucks. We get a very funny verb here. This is kolaboo, uh, which in earlier Greek it, it's a later word, but it occurs in Aristotle and um, uh, and in Polybius. It's a later word. It means to cut off or mutilate. Often, and it's not a very pleasant word. Generally, it was a word that meant to cut off people's feet or hands and so on as punishment. Uh, in New Testament Greek, and it only occurs twice here and in Mark, it means to um, shorten or abridge something, to make it shorter. Uh, so interesting example of a, a late word with variety of meanings. So unless the, those days um, had been shortened, aorist passive, so the verb is kolobo, it's an Omicron contract verb. Uk an esothe pasa sucks. This is a Hebraism here. Literally, all flesh would not be saved. And so, pasa sucks for just a general anybody. So, no one would be saved. Uh, dia detus electus. And we get that verb again. Kola bothesontai. Hi hemera ekenai. So, um, what we have here um, oh, on account of the elect these days those days have been shortened on account of the elect the chosen ones toti ian tis humin ape and uh, at that time if someone might say to you idu hori ho christos behold here is the christ or hori there he is me pistuete, do not believe. So we're getting may here plus the subjunctive for only, uh, in place of imperative. Ege theson tai ga pseudo christoi, kai pseudo prophetai, kai dosus in semea megale, kai terata hosti planesai edunaton, kai tus electus. This is a New Testament word, of course, false messiahs. Um, so, for false messiahs and false prophets will arise. They use the aorist passive here just for the normal future. It's really um, just translated as though it were um, active. So, false prophets and false messiahs will arise, or perhaps causative will be caused to arise. Kaidosusin, uh, they will give uh, great signs and terata, this is the neuter plural from teras, 
uh, third declension noun, portents, wonders, hosts de planesi, we get that plena uh, verb again, so as to lead astray a dunaton, if possible, even the elect, the chosen ones. Idu pro hereka humin, behold, I have said this uh, to you pro beforehand. Hereka, of course, perfect from Lego. Eon un eposin humin. Therefore, if they say to you, Idu en to eremo estin, behold, he is in the desert, may ex elthati, do not go out there. Uh, Idu en tois temeois me pistuete. Um, this is a very vague word. It can mean chambers, it can mean a storage room. Um, some have suggested it refers to rooms in the synagogue, lecture rooms in the synagogue. It's just a, um, it's a place where you store things, really. Uh, so behold, he is in the chambers. Uh, do not believe. Again, may plus the subjunctive. Hospega he astrape ex ercatai apo anatalon kai finatai heos dos moon. For just as he astrape the lightning comes out apo anatolon. Now we get anatolon and we're going to get dos moon here. This is connected with anatello to rise and it refers to the rising of the sun and hence the east and dusmon is connected with duo to set and so this is the setting of the sun and hence the west. Uh, so as lightning comes from the east and appears uh, until the west uh, so from the risings and the settings, understand of the sun. Thus the parousia, the coming of the Son of Man, Esti, will be. Parousia is formed from paraimi. Paraimi means I am present, and then the abstract noun parousia is the presence, so hence the coming of the Son of Man. Hopu ean a to ptoma eke sun ag. Uh, sun on tai hoi a etoi. Um, this is a, a strange word here, Potoma. It's connected with pipto, falling. It's a rather grotesque word. It it can mean the 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 um, the trunk of a person. That is the body minus the head. And I think the original idea was you chop off someone's head and what falls to the ground is the trunk. And that's what this is here. It's often just translated the body or the dead body, which is probably the softer meaning here. Um, so it's literally wherever, and then ian for an, wherever the dead body might be, there the eagles, the aetoi, uh, will be gathered. Uh, erist, sorry, a, a future passive from Sunago. So, a rather uh, grotesque metaphor here. Heros de meta ten thlipsin ton hemeron canon hot helios scottis thesatai. Now, you can see by the way the editor has set this up that this is uh, meant to be poetic in some sense. It doesn't scan, but it's meant to be poetic or some sort of quotations, not in dark, so that means it's not directly from the Septuagint, but the imagery is taken from various Old Testament texts. Uh, so immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun, Scottish Theosotai, will be made dark. Scotos is darkness, this is from Scotisdo to, um, to make dark, and this is the future passive here, will be made dark. Kaihe Selene Udose Tofengos Autes, and the moon will not give its light. Fengos is a third declension noun, neuter noun. Kai Asteres Pesuntai Apotu Uranu, and the stars will fall from heaven. Kai 
dunamis turn uranon salutes on time. The so the stars will fall from heaven. This is the future from Pipto. It becomes Pezumai in the future. It goes into the middle. The high dunamis, the powerful ones of the heavens. This refers, of course, to the sun and the moon, often referred to as the dunamis. So the the rulers of the heavens, the powerful ones of the heavens. Uh, Salutheisontai, again future passive from saluo, to shake, they will be shaken. Kaitoti fenesatai tosemeon to huiu to anthropu in urano. And at that time, the sign of the Son of Man will be seen in heaven. And at that time, Kopsontai pasai hai fulai tes ges kaiopsontai ton huion tu anthropu ekominon epi ton nephelon tu urenu meta dunamios kai doxes polis. Um, now the verb here is kopto, this is the future kopsontai in its middle. Kopto is to beat, in the middle to beat oneself and hence to lament or wail. The, um, in ancient times, people often beat their breasts in anguish, and that's what's, come, what's happening here. So, And at that time, all the uh, Fulai, the tribes of the earth, will lament or will wail. Kai Opsontai, and they will see the Son of Man, participle, coming upon the clouds of heaven. And again, this is a quotation from the Old Testament, uh, with power and much glory. Kai apostileo tus angelus autu metasalpingos megales. And he will send, this is future from apostello, you can see it's future by the accent in one lambda. Uh, so he will send his angels metasalpingos, this is from salpinx, a uh, which means a trumpet, so with a trumpet, with a great trumpet, kai uh, episunaxusin, and they will gather together from episunago to select the, uh, his elect from the, literally from the four winds, ap uh, acron uranon heos ton acron auton, this is idiomatic here, it's literally from the corners of the heavens until their corners. So we might just paraphrase that from one end of the heavens to the other. And this next little section um, on the lesson of the fig tree, again this is in Mark and Luke. Apodites suces mathete ten parabolen. So learn imperative, aorist imperative from Manthano from the, uh, sorry, learn the parable from the fig tree, from the fig. Hotan ede hoklados autes genetai hapalos kai tafule ek fue, genos gete hoti engus to theros. Whenever um, at that time the, uh, the klados, uh, its branch, genetai, might become hapalos. This is supple, or perhaps soft or supple. And the fula, the leaves, ek fue, neuter plural singular verb, uh, might grow out. Uh, you know that hototheros engus, this is the third declension noun, the summer is near. Kaihutos kai humes, thus also you, hotan ideti pantatout, and whenever you see all these things, Ginos get a hoti angus est in epithurais. You know that uh, it is near at the, the doors. Amen lego humin hoti ume parelthe hegenea aute heos an panta tauta genetai. Truly I say to you that this generation in no way will pass, will, will not in any way pass away until. Pantatauta, all these things, neuter plural singular verb, might happen. 
Well, again, you need to look at the commentaries on this because the generation did pass away. Um, various interpretations of this. Ho Uranos Kai Hege, the heaven and the earth, Paraleusitai, from Paraurkamai, which we get twice here. This is the future, here's the aorist. So heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not, ume plus subjunctive, in any way pass away. And that's the second part of chapter 24.